Good day, traders. The four-step method to high-performance trading and the free audio program, the seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders, are both free downloads to help you develop the skill set, the mindset, the discipline to master the markets. The link is down below in the box, the description box. They're both free downloads. Let's get started. Good day, traders. Stacy Burkett from Stacy Burke Trading. Uh, today, we're going to be talking again about high of week, low of week, false break, reversals, and the day count. Just to clarify a few things, we'll look at some examples. Uh, but coming back to understanding the only three things that markets do, the best playbook trade setups that I put in there all are based on one of three things, trend trades, reversal trades, or high of day, low of day, low of day, high of day, trading range opportunities for session scalps. If we're in a trend trade, we will often be in a maybe a first green day, first red day opportunity that is a reversal, but it's a trend trade on day three. So the breakout has failed, the, the reversal is already in process, and now we may have a trend trade opportunity, or we may be in a trend already and we get a pullback for the continuation with the initial trend. We can get a false break reversal, so a breakout trade that fails, and then we get a first red day or first green day that is the catalyst set up for the trend trade going back to the other side. And then we could just be merely in a, a trading range where we could get uh, London lower day buy opportunity, or it could be in a, a narrow range day or a uh, just a consolidated three day market because we're waiting on news and it may just be a session trade between the high and the low of the day at the session timings. It could be a three session setup. It could be uh, just a three day trading range. There are different scenarios. One of the most important things to understand is that once a market breaks out, we have other time frame traders in the market. So if this, if traders are identifying with a break of a previous day's high or low, Ideally, I want to see a weekly level broken for a real opportunity for a capitulation type move. And sometimes traders get caught up. We could have a, a weekly high up top and traders are looking for the reversal off the previous day's low as a false break to begin the day count when in reality what's happened is we've had a day one, day two and a pullback on a day three for a trend trade back in the original direction. So when we violate a weekly high or low, and we'll put this in so traders understand that, a weekly high or low, false break. That's when we can see significant moves. When we're on the inside of a weekly high and low, we can certainly see a reversal situation set up uh, where a great question, we we have a new false break, the market comes down and makes a false break, which way is it going? So if, even if we had an outside bar, if this is a weekly high, it all matters about what happens the next day. We could have a market that trades down into the weekly low and sets up for a three-day explosive move, or we could have a market that trades back up into the high break and structure, pump and dump for the move back down. So coming back to one of the things I'm going to start repeating over and over again is that hindsight does pay. Because what happens today will all be based on the setup that evolves yesterday and the day before, day one, day two, day three. So if we have a weekly high that's somewhere up top and we have a weekly low, I'll just draw these and we have a weekly low that's somewhere down here, and our new week starts in here and we have a Monday that sets our opening range, which we talked about in the beginning of the playbook. That sets our initial high and low for the week. But if we're inside, you have to understand that when the week starts, we're inside. Now we may on a day two extend the range on a Tuesday. So now we have day one, day two, but we're still inside a weekly high or low. So now we have our initial balance. Our initial balance is in a large percentage of time, one of these extremes will tend to hold by the end of the week. So one of these now can become the high. We could have a day three 
We could get a day three that breaks down and then a day four trade that rolls over for 50 pips. It could be in a trading range. We have a trading range week. It doesn't even have to take out the low of the previous week. But we have a three-day setup. It could be a day one, day two, an inside bar, day three that rolls over. Or we could have a market that now on day two gives a trend trade and continues to break higher, taking out the high of the week. At which point we could get a market that then trades maybe as an inside bar, a break in structure, a false break for a high of week, low of day trade. So understanding who is trapped, where the false break is and where you're at in relation to the previous week's high or low will help you form a thesis for the best trade setup. So it's not just a matter of whether a border has been broken. And we talked about the importance of timing. So coming back to uh, one great question from a trader was he, they broke the, it was a three day breakout. They broke the high. And he, wanted, he, he kept saying, well, if I short one of these, I would have been stopped out on day three. Remember what's happening. You're shorting a market that's breaking out. It's still going up. Just because it's broken the third day does not mean that that is a sell situation. We need the market to give us that sell trade in the timing window for the trade setup. Asia, London, New York. That's a one, two, three. Three, And if you think about other time frame traders now, when this market breaks out, we now have triggered one hour, four hour and end of day longer time frame traders into the market. Just because it's broken that level does not mean that all of a sudden it's going to go straight down. The market needs now to trap volume up high, break down and pump up. That's our pump up at the beginning of the timing window, the pump and dump for the trade. So when we go up initially, we're taking traders up into the high before we go into the next timing window for the pump and dump setup, which is very specifically outlined in that section of the playbook regarding those three day breakouts. But you always want to be asking yourself when a breakout trade is in the market, we could have a breakout trade that closes up high. Now we know longs are in the market. We know that if they stay up there and they trigger breakouts again, now we have volume caught up high, but we also have the space down here of breakout traders that have not been stopped out yet. We've talked about understanding where the money is. The higher a trader gets caught buying or the lower they get caught selling, the further away they get. And we're not talking about a market that's trending down. We're talking about a market that breaks out, pulls back, breaks out, pulls back breaks out, fails, and rolls over. Same thing in the long direction. So if you don't have the high-low levels on your charts, the easiest thing to do is just draw them. Keep a line on your chart and understand who is in the market. If they're getting caught selling down low and the market closes down low and they continue to trigger breakout traders, especially if there's a gap, this could be setting up for the short squeeze parabolic trade coming back up in the other direction. So we'll look at an example, but I also want to just scroll through each day and look at how one three-day setup evolves into the next three-day setup. Now, I'm just going back a year ago on the euro. And, and again, this is just a random sort of situation. We can pick any instrument, but we have a weekly high and a weekly low when we head into our new week. So if we just bring this a bit narrower, our new week starts. We're coming to the screen on day one. That's Monday. As I, as I say over and over again, Monday's day one. Because when you come to the screen on a Monday, it's a fresh start. Regardless of what you see heading into the end of the week or what we perceive as the market is doing, when we come to the screen on day on Monday, it's, it's the beginning of the week and we have day one. So we can start the week fresh. We can develop a thesis. But something else to just repeat it's not about me trying to trade the euro every day. I'm looking for setups. So I'm looking at the euro, the pound, the Aussie, New Zealand, US CAD, US Swiss, US yen, gold, oil, S&P, NASDAQ, and the Dow. So I'm just looking for the easiest to recognize setup. And one of the first things I always talk about, as you've heard me say, is the day count. So the day count begins if we go back and look at our weekly high and low, the last trader that was in the market was a breakout trader on our Wednesday. We took out the high of the week. 
which was our Monday, our opening range break. We had our Monday high. And that market has failed. That breakout has failed coming into the end of our week. So we have our close of Friday. We have a breakout trade that failed. So we had breakout traders who were in the market on Wednesday who, for the most part, by all accounts, have not been stopped out, but they've come back to the pretty much the low of the day. The, the stops may have been a bit lower or they may have moved into the next day and been stopped out. But we have breakout traders in the market. Monday is our day one, and it sets the high and low of the week, the range, the initial range. I talked about measuring the range when the week starts. So when we have our Monday print, we don't have any false break, peak formation, high or low of the week in place. We have a weekly high and low from the previous week where our false breaks began. We had the false break on the Tuesday, so we had the breakout of Monday's low, and the pullback inside. We had our day two and day three failed. The breakout failed. So we have a day one, day two, day three. The last false break, peak formation low was on the Tuesday. And then we had the breakout of the high of the week and it failed. Then it came back inside. So when we come to the screen on our Monday, we have a high of Friday and a low of Friday. And this is an example of a market that technically for Friday and Monday stays in a range bound market. It does not break out. It does not break out. So this marginal touch of the low uh, without taking out the low or breaking out is not a breakout. That is just a market that is traded from the high of Friday on the breakout of the high of the day and reversed and come back and traded off the low and gone into consolidation. Now, I won't call this a first red day because we don't have a pump day. The pump day, as we talked about in the playbook, we want to see a market either break out or go vertical for our day one pump as part of that three day uh, first red day, first green day setup. On our Tuesday, the market goes vertical into the high of the day, the high of Monday into, into the uh, Monday's high and just underneath of Friday's high before collapsing. Now, this is an example of, again, a trading range, high of day, low of day opportunity, depending on which session you are trading. But again, notice we're inside. The next, at the end of that session, the market breaks out of the low of Monday and closes as a breakout market. We now have a day one shorts triggered into the market. Day one shorts are in the market and then we go back now on our day two and we measure 50 to 75 pips for three levels of rise. This is 25 pips. We'll just type that in so traders can see that. This is 25 pips from the low of the day. So when we're going down, we have breakout traders in the market. We measure from the low of the day as potential strikes on now. You just heard me say three levels of rise. Now this particular day was a Fed day. We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, day one, day two, day three. We have day one shorts in the market. The market can't even get 25 pips. It takes out the lower peak formation heading into the close. But understand heading into the Fed, the consolidation is down low at the low of the week on a three day setup. Now coming back to You've heard me repeat this over and over again. Prices in a box. And when you go back in hindsight, because I'm going to repeat this. Yesterday tells us everything we need to know. Shorts are in the market on day two. We have breakout traders in the market. This is a three peak formation for a sell high setup. 25 pips from the low of the day on the day of the Fed tells me that this is going to be a first bounce trade opportunity back to the high of the week. They're trapping volume down low. Now we wouldn't, even if my thesis is that it's a first bounce trade, it needs to confirm that with the price action when it happens. So I don't just get in and trade. This is where, again, traders, and this is the one instrument. There could be two other instruments that were set up better in this week, but we're walking through the process. Day one, day two, day three, Reversal. Now, this peak formation low was a breakout. This was a breakout. Now, I just explained to one trader, peak formations are not part of the setups. But this false break reversal is because that now forms our day one. And you don't want to counter trend. You don't want to be selling back into the peak formation after the false break. If a market false breaks on the high or low of a week. You heard me say, heading into the week, we were inside. We had no weekly levels broken. When this breaks out, we have broken the low of the current week and reversed. 
we now have volume trapped down low on the Wednesday heading into the Fed. All of these lower level shorts are now trapped. So coming back to repeating this, this setup and being forced to sell down low helps me develop my thesis for a first bounce trade opportunity after the Fed news is released. It's not about me going to the screen going, is this going up or down? This is a three-day setup. The false break now gives me a thesis on day two of where I want to have my bias. Day two on a reversal trade, where is the money? The money, of course, is now at the high of the week. Low of day, high of week. So if I want a low of day trade opportunity after the Fed, it's not a second, it is a second day trade setup, but not in Asia. We need a low of the day opportunity. This is a first green day trade setup. A low of the day trade opportunity heading into our Europe London window. Now we have criteria spelled out specifically about entering this setup, this trade setup, once price confirms. So the 15 minute chart is the setup. The five minute is the entry. When you get uh, c confident and consistent at that, you'll understand that the level is there and you can get in at the one minute in the same way. The one minute opportunity is because it's at the level, at the timings, and it's confirmed by the same criteria. Now just for simplicity's sake, day one, day two, day two now we've broken out of the high of the week. So yes, we've triggered breakout traders at the high of Wednesday, but we've also broken out of the high of the week. Day one, day two, the high of the week, if we drag this across now, becomes a potential level for a false break reversal. Asia, London, New York. Now, on day three, my thesis, and I repeat this, three-day setups, the biggest moves will come usually after three sessions. If the trade starts here, if, it, if this is the high of the day, you don't have... I, I, some traders are confused thinking because it's up here on, on this day, I need to sell it here. No, I want to I sell it as it's getting ready to blow off. Now, if London collapses and begins the move, then I'm going to be taking the low-hanging fruit trade in the U.S. But when I get a three-session setup on a day three at the high of the week after it's broken out and we're reversing, we have lower lows, lower highs, that's the break in structure. This this little pattern right here in this little area, we'll just blow this up. Remember, the thesis is already there. That's the trade right here. That's the pump and dump, the low, the low of the day. So just to come back and repeat that. So if we have a market that, let's use our red button here. We have a market that's gone up and failed and we get our three peaks and it goes lower. This is the trade right there this pattern right there that's the trade at the timing window so all the other stuff confuses traders but but the fact is it was broken down we already have a market that's failed then we start I, i've said the 7 a.m new york time can begin the stop hunt now sometimes it might be at quarter to seven sometimes it might be at 7 15. But that hour prior to the 12 candle window will typically begin the stop on. How do we know? Well, you heard me say that's the low of the day. That little bar that forms the low of the day, when it starts there, that pattern that goes up 25 to 50 pips, that's the trade right there. The market's already broken down. That is the trade setup when I'm shorting on a broken down market. Now, we already had the peak formation failure, but the breakout set that up it the breakout failed and then we had our three peaks and then the market went made lower lows and then the pump up and the dump between 8 and 8 30 a.m new york now is it going to be at the same time every single day no but usually by 8 a.m in a broken down market we'll have a thesis that we're already looking for that setup. That's the trade setup. That's the pump and dump after it's broken down on the false break reversal on that particular day. This is an excellent example of a breakout 
that failed. So we had a day three short squeeze, parabolic move. It broke down and reversed and consolidated into the close as a first red day after a parabolic short squeeze. That becomes our day two. It's an inside day. But that inside day then, on day three, they trade back in down into the inside day low, consolidate, there's news, the market goes vertical on day three. Day one's the high of the week, day two's the inside day, the short squeeze consolidation on the inside day for the vertical move. That's a Friday. That breakout now fails on the Monday, and that becomes our day one. The day three now becomes our day one because it fails. It fails at the high of the week. Monday trades down in Asia. They pump it up into the New York Open. They trap volume up high for a high of the day U.S. session sell-off on day two, which is Monday, the new week. Failed breakout, vertical move down to where the money is. It breaks out. It fails. They go back up into the breakout level into the breakout level without letting these higher level longs out of the market if they're still in and they go vertical to the other side so go back and study your charts it doesn't matter what instrument it is it, 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 it applies to any market because in order for money to be made it has to be shifted from the many to the few three day setups master the day one understand especially when it's at the high or low of the week when it's inside now you have a break in structure. That can set up the retest for the failed retest and roll over for a trend trade in the opposite direction, the vertical capitulation as we just saw in the failed breakout. And the same thing, it just keeps going. Day one, day two, day three, low of the week, parabolic short squeeze, a retest down low for a day four trend trade back up to the previous day's high into the breakout traders from the Monday. Day one, day two, day three, and the cycle just continues. Inside day and a vertical parabolic short squeeze after the news. So go mark your charts and, and just understand one thing in closing. Even though a template can evolve over every three days or over the course of the week, it doesn't mean that every single week on every instrument is going to be a perfect trade, which is why I reinforce Identify the setups and master the templates and then recognize the instrument that has the cleanest, best trade setup for an easy, low stress, whether it's a scalable trade or it's a session scalp. Pick out the best one. Master these. They show up over and over and over again. Thanks for a lot of great questions. The traders that have already emailed, emailed me the questions, fantastic questions. Uh, I'm going to be addressing all of those. I really appreciate all the feedback. And again, Wednesday, December 28th, 11 a.m., it will be recorded. Have a great day. Enjoy your holidays, and may the markets go with you.